Hey there, card folk. Speed Robo here. My life is uh, very out of flux this week. So we're having another... I don't really feel like doing, you know, my main job, my important work uh, today. So we're just going to do a fun little video. This is the Card Fight Zero tier list, but with a twist. I am going to predict where all future clans are going to be on the tier list as well. Uh, and it's easy for me to do this because uh, Game Studio does not, you know, fix any cards to work in the new system, which is just a completely different game from Cardfight Vanguard. No, no, no. We just copy and paste the skills wholesale from the old Cardfight Vanguard, regardless if it'll work or not. Um, so we know roughly what every skill is going to be. And uh, there, there have been some changes, and we will talk about those. Like some changes to skills and card effects, and we will talk about those uh, in this video as we get to each clan with those changes. So none of this is scripted. This is all off the cuff. I have a rough idea of where every clan's going to lie uh, on this list anyway. Uh, by the way, since I made this template, I'm pretty sure you can just go and use it if you want to do your own tier list. Like, awesome. Let me know what your rankings are in the comments below. If you thought I was accurate, if you thought I wasn't. Um, other disclaimer, I'm going to have some pretty strong opinions in this. Don't take anything I say too super seriously. Um, because, again, this is not a scripted analysis video where I carefully dive in everything. This is off the cuff, no script. So, yeah, I'm going to shout out some fairly strong, potentially divisive opinions. Don't take it too seriously. I'm just here for a good time. So let's get started. Um, anyway. I don't think I've used this website before. Okay, yep, getting started. We've got Angel Feather. Um, so Angel Feather is not out yet, but it will be out soon-ish. It came out in the first wave in Season 1. I expect it to come out soon-ish. And it's going to be S-tier. It's going to be meta-defining. Uh, two reasons. Number one, Feather Palace. So Feather Palace is their Mega Blast. And as you probably know, Mega Blasts have been buffed in zero. So they cost one less Counter Blast, less Soul. This is an on-hit Mega Blast that heals one damage for each of your rear guards. Let that sink in. You heal five on-hit for a Mega Blast. So not only are Mega Blasts now completely achievable in Zero because of the cost reduction, but every single on-hit skill might as well just be an act skill because you, if you play smart, your opponent has absolutely no options to stop your on-hits. They just don't. They cannot stop your on-hits, uh, assuming you're not a complete idiot. So healing 5 and 0, you might as well just win the game. It might as well just be Mega Blast win the game. So I do expect Feather Palace to receive a nerf before launch. But a card I don't expect to receive a nerf is better than Feather Palace, and it is their Ride Chain that ends in Cosmo Healer Egodial. And Egodial is on hit, Persona Blast, heal one. On hit, heal. I'd... What more do you want? Seriously, what more do you want? Oh, you do want more? Um, they have Lozenge Magus as their starter. Shuffle a fifth heal into your deck. Draw a card. That's their starter. Yeah, that, they're going to be S tier, no doubt. Um, Aqua Force, again, another clan probably coming pretty soon. Um, it's a season two clan. So, Aqua Force in the original game had a huge problem of if the opponent got a damage trigger, they were just kind of boned. Every single card's a damage trigger in this game. Um, yeah, God, I own Jesus Christ, Aqua Force. Uh, now, I expect Aqua Force to be one of those clans that gets some ridiculous buffs because Game Studio wants every single set they release to be definitive power creep to force their players that want to stay competitive to buy it. Look at the Shadow Paladin buffs that happen, for example. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about those later. But, like, yes, we know that this does happen. And especially if it's a main character or a main villain clan, they're going to buff the ever-loving shit out of it. So I expect Aqua Force to receive huge buffs, but I still don't expect Aqua Force to be that good. I 
But knowing what we have before we see buffs, I expect Aqua Force to be like E tier. I expect D tier because of buffs. Um, moving right along, Bermuda Triangle. God. What a... Bermuda Triangle needs a buff desperately. Desperately needs a buff. Literally anything. It, the clan is so bad. So bad. It is the worst clan in the game. Um, our grade threes are bad Ashura Kaiser, bad uh, Maiden of... Whoa, whoa, what is it? The, the Oracle Think Tank Cherry Blossom card. Like, that Lena's just bad that because it gets 1,000 less on its power bump. Um, then we have a card that doesn't work at all on Vanguard, which is Rainbow Light Kareem. Uh, the worst ride chain and the worst Persona Blast in the game with Riviere. Like, he's functionless. On hit, Persona Blast, give three cards plus five. That only matters if the opponent does not have intercepts. And yeah, that's it. That, and you run stands. You have to run stands to make it work, and then you have to pray you hit your stand trigger. That's like that's not good. And then um, Pacifica is the only like good grade three we have. He's a mega blast, which you know, like you can use them, but they're only so much. And her mega blast is on hit Vanguard instead of on hit anything, which God, that's fucked me over more than once. So yeah, no F tier solid. The only thing we do is draw cards. And in Cardfight Zero, you have to run draw trigger. If you're going to be a competitive deck, you have to be able to run nine draws in your deck. Because draw triggers have absolutely no downside. The reason why draw triggers had lower shield in the original version of Cardfight is because draw triggers are the only trigger that are good no matter when you get them. Stands and crits, they have to be your turn to be viable, and heals sometimes don't work. Draws work your turn, your opponent's turn, start of turn, end of turn, whenever, you're always getting something out of it, whereas the other triggers, that is not necessarily the case. So the fact that they got rid of shield values and draw triggers do not have a downside means that if your deck is not running nine draws, it is a bad deck. Full stop. Um, because you're just you're using worse triggers. Not using if you're not using nine nine draw four heal, you're you're using worse triggers than everybody else. And Bermuda Triangle absolutely cannot get away with running draw triggers because the only thing that it can do is draw cards. So if your skills are drawing cards and your triggers are drawing cards, you have no aggression and you're gonna die. And like that that is just killing Bermuda Triangle. They need a buff now. They are the worst clan in the game. Without contest. F tier. Um, next, we have Dark Irregulars. So, Dark Irregulars. I'm actually sliding up into S tier. Like, I was kind of torn between high A or low S. Uh, it's going to be S tier. And the reason why is its Mega Blasts are all good and are easy to activate in Dark Irregulars with how much you soul charge. Um, it has retire Kagero tier retire options. Win the Ripper, Bloody Calf. Phenomenal. And Amon is just great. Counter Blast 1, put, something into your, put one of your cards into your soul, kill one of your opponent's cards. You can convert dead grade 3s into your hand into dead boosters or even just take out their interceptors. On your opponent. It doesn't matter what you do. Retiring something your opponent cares about or turning a th getting rid of a 3 out of your hand. Yeah, sign me up any day of the week. Amon's great. And uh, you never have to worry about your opponent um, getting damage triggers, ever. You don't have to worry about that because Amon's just like, oh, plus one for each of my soul, and then don't worry, we got Doreen the Thruster as a booster. Um, it can even crit boost its own Vanguard, totally get away with running the draws. Um, you know, you've got no life keen. Where's the downside in playing Dark Irregulars? Because I'm not seeing it. Uh, Dimension Police. Solid A tier. Uh, giving your Vanguard extra crit is your shtick. Um, it's just good. Uh, it doesn't have much beyond that. It doesn't have any, you know... It's not a flashy clan, but it's a clan that gets the job done. And 
You only need a clan that gives has an extra crit on its vanguard every single turn. Run those nine draws. Yeah, you're you're solid, dude. Solid clan. Really good up there. Eight. Um, Gear Chronicle. Uh, I'm not even gonna place because it's just it's way too far out to really tell with Gear Chronicle. So I put it on here just so people know it's here, but we're gonna skip Gear Chronicle. Genesis. So <sighs> Genesis is gonna be weird because Genesis is just a grab bag of different card effects, but all their costs are soul blast. Like that's what Genesis is. It's on hits are gonna work just fine. Its ride chain is solid. Um it does a lot of card draw, but that's not the only thing it does. It, you can make a build of Genesis that doesn't really use main deck draw options. It's like, okay, I'll use my triggers for that. Which is good. What you want. Um He's probably C tier. Like solidly in the middle. Um, because none of its skills are like super wow. And soul charging a lot's gonna get you decked. Um We'll leave it in C tier for now. I might bump it up to B tier. And my cat Gizmo has decided to join me. We'll see how that goes. Uh Jesus, which paladin is this? Golds? Golds, I think. This is Golds, Royals, Shadows. Okay. Gold Paladin. Um, another clan that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, let me actually think about this, because you've got Blondezel and Spectral Duke. Spectral Duke's great. That just restands. Um, I think Spec Duke, okay, and, it, and it's a ride chain. I think Spec Duke alone's going to put this up to eight here. Old Paladin's got the stuff. I think I think it's got the stuff to go the, the distance. Maybe not A tier, maybe B tier. The low A tier, high B tier. Old Paladin for sure. Uh, Grand Blue. So Grand Blue's really interesting. Um. You know, I think Gold Paladin even has some retire options with Chrome Jailer. No. Yeah, no. A tier. So Grand Blue is really interesting because right now, Grand Blue has one super broken card, and the rest of the clan is meh. And that super broken card is Night Mist. Uh, Counterblast one, turn anything into a taunt. Oh, from the grave? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, a Grand Blue is the one clan that never, ever has to worry about getting its grade twos. It doesn't have to worry about it, because it always has them. Not to mention, Night Mist, uh, swings for 11. Phenomenal. And, uh, Grand Blue's big problem, Grand Blue has two big problems. Big problem number one, it does not have a good grade three. Uh, like, it's best grade three, honestly. Spirit, Spirit Exceed swings for 14 and is a superior ride that's reasonably consistent to get off. Baskirk's a Mega Blast, but you need to be spending that Counter Blast on Night Mists. And you're never going to be able to Baskirk. Monster Frank, Counter Blast 3 to superior ride, and that's it. No. You got the guy that revives itself from the grave. But you need to do that for Night Mist instead. Is that it? Is that all, all we've got? Oh, wait, no, we have uh, Witch Doctor, which is Counter Blast 2, Revive something. Or I could just you do Night Mist twice instead, which is always better. So yeah, Grand Blue, no good grade 3. And we won't have a good grade 3. For a while, because we aren't getting one in the season two wave. We're gonna have to wait until um break rides to get a good grade three for Grand Blue. Um and the other big problem Grand Blue has is that it is really bad against top tiers. Because all the top tiers are just like, oh you have intercepts, that's cute. No, you don't. Um Yeah, like it's all of its S tier matchups are just gonna be terrible. So because Grand Blue is so strong against everything below it, I'm putting it in B tier. Because Night Mist is just like Night Mist is basically the gatekeeper from average to good, and I think that's fair. So next we have Great Nature. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it can give crits to its rear guards because that's what its ride chain does. And let me just confirm that. 
I'll just confirm that real quick. Uh, so Guardian of Truth locks um, gives your rear guards 4,000 power and a crit. That's going to be really, really interesting. And Polaris is good. Leopold's good. Like, it's going to be an interesting clan. I don't think it's that going to, going to be that explosive of a clan. Just giving crits to rear guards. Now, granted, it is off of a ride chain, which is nominal. I don't think it's going to be quite enough to seal the deal on it being, you know, up there with the big boys. Uh, oh, yeah, and Great Nature has a huge problem where um, it retires its own stuff. And in Cardfight Zero, you need to keep two grade twos in your front row basically at all times. And uh, I don't know if Great Nature can do that. It's going to be a huge problem now that I think of it. So, yeah, we're going to have to put, just because of the self-retire mechanic, I think Great Nature is going to live down in D tier. Um, yeah. Kagero, um, God, yeah, you know where it is. S tier, top of S tier. Like, if you play zero, you know Kagero. You know what it's about. Like, Blockade is so broke. It's ridiculous. And this is part of what I was talking about with Grand Problems. Blockade just says, no, you don't get to have taunts. I'm just going to hit your Vanguard three times. Your, your one defensive option, turned it off. Well, one of your two defensive options, I should say. I just turned it off. Snap my fingers, gone. Bye. Hope you have three perf guards in your hand. Um, and then uh, the end just came out, and they let it draw cards when it restands now, because that was a good idea. Because that needed buffed. Because if, if one card needed buffed in all of card fight, oh, oh, it was it was Draconic Overlord at the end. Sure, it costs two counter blast. It draws cards. Stop. What are you doing? God, don't buff that. You morons. Kagro was the last thing that needed it. Uh, Link Joker. God. It, just lock your opponent's... Link Joker. Lock your opponent's um, intercepts. Lock those grade twos. Your opponent can't taunt. Hello, welcome to S tier. That's I'm I'm done. I'm sold on Link Joker right off of that. Mega Colony here. I S tier, and it's coming out soon. And let me let me break it down for you. Let me break down exactly why Mega lives right here. Um, number one, you remember Amber Dragon? Okay, it has that. We've seen it in the story mode. They buffed Giraffa. It costs one counter blast. One counter blast, retire two of my own guys, kill two of my opponent's grade one or less cards. First of all, I should be killing off my opponent's back row anyway, because this game has a severe lack of things that can boost. Because you're forced to run 13 ones and only 13 ones, and there's no triggers. So you have 13 boosters, and that's it, pal. That's all you get. 14 if your starter's a four runner. Whoop de diddly do. Two. It's a ride chain, and it's the best version of the ride chain this game has, because it's the, it's the Amber Dragon version. It's just Amber Dragon again. Jesus Christ. It calls its own fuel for its own on-hit skill. Giraffa, calm down. And instead of Amber Dragon Grade 2 basically not doing anything, the Giraffa Grade 2 is a free on-hit paralyze. Free. What? Stop. Like... Mega Colony has its own version of Blockade. Toxic Trooper. It's Grade 2 Blockade. Holy shit. Then, Antlion, Mega Blast, your opponent's field doesn't stand. I think it's their rear guards only. If it isn't, it'll probably get nerfed to rear guards only, but still, that's great. Mega Colony has Soul Charge out the butt. You want draw power? Here's Master Fraud, and the Machinings just call themselves from Soul. Okay, cool. We have draw power, too. Uh, what don't we have? Literally nothing? Awesome. Like, Mega Colony... If it wasn't for... Dragon if it wasn't for Kagro having overall just more, more shit to work with, Mega Colony would be above it. Um, 
Like, Mega Colony is going to be completely broken. Your opponent just does not get to play the game. When you when you bust out Mega Colony, your opponent doesn't get to play the game. They don't get a boost, and they don't get an intercept. Simple as that. Uh, Murakumo. Murakumo is going to be worse than Bermuda. So, Murakumo was bad in the actual card game. In the actual Season 1 card game. Came out booster set 5. Murakumo was really bad. And Murakumo is just going to be even worse than Zero. Like, it's going to be even worse. Because you are a clan that's focused on superior calling. But then those cards you call go back into the deck at the end of the turn. Midnight Crow is unplayable because it's an 8k that calls a copy of itself from the deck. And it's a grade 2, which is cool. But then that copy goes back into the deck at the end of the turn. You, you cannot maintain a board presence with Murakumo. And you need to maintain a board presence in this. You, are, you have to, or you die. Like, I don't know. They're going to have to completely change how Murakuma works in order for it not to be F-tier. It's that simple. Like, my god. I, I cannot see a world in which Murakuma is playable. Uh, Narukami. God. Um, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of something bad about Narukami. Uh, I think it's just going to be more, more, more Kagero. Honestly, I think it's just going to be more of the same with Kagero. Vermilion hits the entire front row in one attack. Cool. Um, you've got grade ones and grade twos that are blockade. Awesome. Um, you blow, you, you really only get to blow up your opponent's front row, but... Still good. I'm trying to find where the downside is. Um, like, it's just, it's really solid front row control. Um, it's because it has less tools and toys than the other boys. High A tier? Yeah, I think that's fair. Maybe low S. Wiggle around in there. Uh, Neo Nectar. So we've seen Neo Nectar, and uh, Neo Nectar's original gimmick in Season 1 is on hit skills and triggering on hit skills. Which, again, on hit skills are just acts. So this sounds like Neo Nectar would be really good. The problem is, none of Neo Nectar's on hit skills are, like, relevant in Zero. The. Just, they just aren't. Um. The Vanguard doesn't re-stand, doesn't get crit boosts. You call new rear guards, but with how every time you hit your opponent's Vanguard, they gain power. Those new rear guards aren't really gonna do much. And the gene call chain calls them at rest anyway. Like, but you know, maiden of trailing rows, persona blast, call some new cards off of the top of your deck. Those new cards aren't going to really be able to do anything unless you don't have a board to begin with. But you should have a board because you're running nine draw triggers. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, now, the gene call chain is easily going to be the best part of Neonet. And the reason why is because calling a bunch of grade twos is now super, super good. Whereas in the original version of the game, it was kind of just like, meh, whatever. So it's going to be a solid C tier. Solid mid-tier, perfectly playable, but you're not going to do well in Legend Lake. Nova Grappler. Um, Nova Grappler's good. Really solid. This is a bit of a controversial one. I feel like it's B-tier. Um, because re-standing... Sure, Perfect Riser's great. Perfect Riser's great. Brutal Jack's great. It's got a lot of really, really good stuff going for it. When it comes down to it, Nova Grappler's re-standing gimmick that it's focusing on later on in the game, especially in Season 2 and Season 3, not good in Zero. Because again, 
every card's a damage trigger for your opponent. Every time you hit them, they gain plus five. Restanding is only going to take you so far. Perfect Riser, I feel, is just going to be the definitive deck for Nova Grappler until the game dies. It's, I don't feel like this clan's really going to expand, so that's kind of why I put it in B tier. Um, put it in high B tier above Grand Blue, totally. It's fair, but I just I don't feel Nova Grappler is all that in a bag of chips. Is the clan good? Totally. Is the clan Dimension Police Narukami good? No? I feel that's fair. Uh, Nubatama. So, uh, Nubatama's gimmick of making the opponent discard or bind cards from hand. Yeah, that ain't really gonna work in Zero. Just, uh, just not really gonna work, you know? Um, because the only card in the opponent's hand that really matters is uh, the perfect cards. So, how Nubatama, you know, lets the opponent choose what to discard and what to bind. You're just, you're not going to get the perfect cards. Unless they change how that works and it prioritizes hitting perfect cards out, then, you know, that's okay. You aren't really dealing with the opponent's field, though, are you, bud? And uh, the bind's only for a turn. <sighs> just, like, Nubatama was a thought threat back in the original game. Because hand size was everything in that. Uh, here, field size is everything. Zero. It's your hand size doesn't really matter. Um, so with that in mind, and Nubatama's really, really lackluster card pool, yeah, I give it an E tier. I, you know, Kujikiri Congo gonna be cool, I guess. Um. No, because it's on attack, Vanguard, Counterblast 1, bind the board, so your opponent's interceptors already have to be gone. Yeah, no. Um, man, I'm struggling to think of something like super cool that Nubatama can do in Zero and not seeing it. Uh, Oracle Think Tank, uh, welcome to B tier. Um, I'll put you below Grand Blue. I feel that's fair. So Oracle Think Tank, it's main shtick, drawing cards. Again, doesn't really work. You need to draw triggers as your triggers. That simple. But here's what it, it does do. It, like, it's, it's basically the inverse of Blockade, where Blockade says, okay, your primary defensive option of playing grid two to your front row, that does not work anymore. You have to do perfect guards. Oracle Think Tank flips that around and says, okay, your perfect guards don't work against me. You better have grade twos in your front row all the time or you just die. Once you hit five damage against Oracle Think Tank, you're dead. It's over. They're going to play Silent Tom. That's uh, GG. They play Silent Tom. You're at five damage. GG. Period. Um, and also, Evil Princess Uriley snipes perfect guards. I, I'm not sure how it figures that out quite correctly, but it, it tends to favor perfect guards, I think. So... That's cool, I guess. Um, that's really all I got to say on Oracle Think Tank. That's, that's about it. Silent Tom and you, Riley. Good. Really, really good. Like, annoyingly good. Because you can't choose when to perfect guard. So, um, if you're at four damage, your opponent's got Silent Tom and two attacks at your Vanguard, you can't say, okay, I want to perfect guard those two while I'm at four, and then Silent Tom. No, no, no. Die. <laughs> Which, that sucks. Uh, you know, maybe fix that to make the game play like card fight. Throw that out there. Uh, Pale Moon. Pale Moon's basically got the Oc Force problem, where, yeah, you can get a bunch of attacks, but who cares? Uh, it's good for clearing out. If your opponent has two intercepts, like, an Alice can put an extra damage through on the Vanguard, which, you know, maybe that's enough to win games. Probably won't be. Pale Moon overall, just not very good. And it's not going to be getting much better either, even with the release of Silverthorn. Like, that's just not going to be getting too much better. It's going to be getting a little bit more power. That's good. You know. It's going to help you maintain your field presence with, uh, you know, Lukier's Act skill. It's 
cool. So that's that's nice. Especially against, you know, up tier upper tiers. Helps with the S tier matchups. Um but what else does it do, you know? And maintaining helping maintain your field presence. Like your triggers should be doing that. Your that's what your draw triggers. Royal Paladin, solid A tier, right there with Dimension Police. Give crit Vanguard beat face. Hey, dude, whatever works for you, man. Uh, you got a little bit more superior calling than Dimension Police. So you're going to get more support than DP, so you're going to be a little bit higher than that. Yeah. Royal Paladin. Shadow Paladin. Oh, you know, guys, you know, they buffed Shadow Paladin. They, they buffed Shadow Paladin before it came out and didn't need the buff. Phantom Blaster Dragon did not need a buff. Phantom Blaster Dragon did not need to retire an opponent's rig. It just didn't. It was already going to be good enough. Um, Overlord's buff, I actually agree with because that card was garbage. So making its Persona Blast skill free, totally fine. I feel like its act skill, overkill. Um, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, dude, just fight Shadow Paladin on the ladder. They've got one of the best ride chains in the game. They got buffed. They call a bunch of stuff, draw a bunch of stuff, give retire a bunch of stuff, give their Vanguard crit. No complaints. Um, it just doesn't have quite the same package of bullshit that Kagura and Mega Colony have, so ranked a little bit lower. We're even going to slide Angel Feather. You know, we're sliding Angel Feather down to bottom of s like i feel like it's really going to shake up the meta when it comes out but i don't know if it's better than this um spike brothers uh welcome to e tier i play a lot of spike brothers like these two clans i know and they're easily the worst two clans in the game right now um so spike brothers has the basically the same problem as murakumo but there's a positive you get power for it so you're not gonna have a problem hitting your opponent you're just going to have a problem when your opponent punches you back because you don't have a way to deal with that. Um, Spike Brothers is going to get a lot better when we get our um, EBO3 support, which is our Season 2 Limit Break support, because uh, we should be getting Jelly Beans. Jelly Beans is basically Spike Brothers' uh, dance a lot. But for Dudleys, uh, that's going to be huge. That is going to be huge for Spike Brothers. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's all I really got to say on it. Like, it's, it's really, really suffering from just a lack of cards. Like, you have barely enough cards in the entire card pool to build a deck for Spike Brothers. I still have to run one copy of a Cray Elemental. Because we have four different grade threes. That's it. Um, really bad, yeah. Uh, what else? What else to say about Spike Brothers? I don't know. That's pretty much it. You know, E tier, because when you cannibalize your own field, not good. Speaking of last clan, Tachikaze. Um, so Tachikaze does cannibalize its own field, but as a way to bounce back from it, and it can mostly focus on cannibalizing its back row, like Scott's got Kara for that. And your starter, uh, Dragon Egg for that. You know, to keep you not completely boned and not killing your own intercepts, which... Oh, no, it's cool. What does it do beyond that? Um, honestly, not a whole lot. It's got a pretty decent superior ride. It can run draws no prob because its Vanguard's going to have enough power. Hey, just if I remember correctly, it doesn't have a way to boost the crit of its Vanguard. At launch, I don't think it does. No, I know it gets stuff like that later. When it gets its Season 2 and Season 3 support, I feel like Tachikaze is going to move up a bit on the tier list. But right now, uh, I think it's going to live in D tier. I, just, I feel like it's a little bit better than Spike Brothers because it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to cannibalize its front row like Spike Brothers. So there you go. Uh, there's my list. Um... I feel like this is pretty fair. These clans, like, right now, Kagro, Kagro and Shadow Paladin are top of the block. Like, the clans that are out right now, uh, I'll, take, I'll take the 
predictions off the list so you can see more clearly like right now what we're looking at. No, wait, that is Oracle. So that's Genesis here, Aquaforce. So anyway, this is the this is basically the tier list how it shakes up right now. Um, these are easily the bottom. Like, if you're trying to you know win a bunch of games, climb up ladder, don't play these. <laughs> so bad hail moon is easily the best out of the three easily like there's a clear tier difference between all of these they're all still really bad. uh anything up here you can pretty reasonably play and do well at except arguably grand blue just because it has such a dumpster matchup against kagero and shadow paladin and that's what you're going to be fighting most of the time oracle think tank still does okay against them nova grappler does pretty good against them. It's got a lot of tools in its arsenal right now. Like Nova Grappler, very solid. Uh, Royal Paladin, Mention Police, and Dark Irregulars. I feel like people are kind of sleeping on Dark Irregulars. I feel like that clan's up there with the big boys. Um, but like, yeah, these these five clans right here. If you're looking to climb up some ranks, get some wins, hit Legend, pick one of these. It'll do ya. I mean, clearly, highly re I highly recommend. Kagero or Shadow Pal. Those two are, I feel, definitively the best, as they've been more proven. I just have a feeling Dark Irregulars is with them. What I've seen from what I've worked, from what I've labbed out. Clearly the community disagrees a bit on that, so, you know. If you want to play a proven good clan, Kagero, Shadow Paladin. But, Kagero, Shadow Paladin, Dark Irregulars, Royals, or Dimension Police will do you also get away with nova grappler people feel it's a lot better than i think it is uh nova grappler is probably my most controversial placement on the list i'm gonna be honest but hey you know that's just my take i've been speed robo thank you for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed this madness uh i did it'll be up soon good all right bye